kids! Welcome back to Calvary Kids Connect! I'm Teacher Phoebe and today we have an awesome video planned for you guys. First we'll be having a worship session. Then next we'll be going over our memory verse. I hope you guys are practicing at home. Next it'll be followed up by a teaching by Teacher Deborah. And then we'll have an awesome puppet show featuring Monica and Ryan. But first let's open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today Lord. I just pray that you open our hearts and teach us, Lord, with the things that you want us to learn today. Lord, help us to ignite our fire within us, Lord, so that we can teach the word to the rest of the world, Lord, so that they know your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's get started with some worship. John 8:12. And Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me. Share the 
Awesome worship and praise. Now let's go over the memory verse. Hey guys, so it's up. So today I'm going to be doing the memory verse, John 8 12. So let's go to the memory verse. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Bye guys. That was awesome memory verse review practice. Now, let's go on to the teaching with Teacher Deborah. Hi, boys and girls. My name is Teacher Deborah. I'm glad to be joining you today um, to go over our lesson for, um, for Sunday school. Um, if you weren't able to make it to church, um, I'm glad you're joining us today here. Before we get started, let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to come and learn your word. I pray that you give us ears to hear, a heart to receive. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, this is an exciting lesson. It has to do with the parables and how Jesus taught in parables. Um, we're going to be reading out of Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 27. Go get your Bibles. Remember, Luke is in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke. And we're going again to chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. All right, let's get started. Chapter 10, verses 25. And a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what is, it, what is written in the law, and how readest thou? And he said to him, and he answered, saying, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said to Jesus again, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered, There was a certain man who went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves, and they stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him laying there on the floor, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he came, was at the place and came and looked at him, passed him by also on the other side. And then there was a certain Samaritan, a Samaritan, excuse me, as he journeyed, came where he was and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him, bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine, giving him medicine, and set him on his own beast, mule probably, and brought him to the inn and took care of him. And on the next day when he departed, he took out two pence and gave it to the inn maker and said to him, take care of him and whatever you spend in addition, when I come again, I will repay thee. Now, which of these three thinkest thou was the neighbor to him that, shall, that fell among the thieves? And he said, the one that showed mercy on him. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. Thank you, Lord, for your word. So you see, boys and girls, Jesus gave stories, um, parables. That's what a parable is. Basically, it's a, a, a earthly story to bring out a heavenly meaning. Jesus used our circumstances to be able to explain what he wanted people to understand. And sometimes he said them in parables because he didn't want everybody to know God's word or God's plan because it wasn't meant for everybody at that moment. And he wanted um, to be able to, to be sure that the people that were coming to him actually really wanted to receive the word, not just be fed. You know, remember the, the, the fish and the, the 5,000 people that were there and how God provided, you know, some people just came along for the ride because they wanted to eat or because they needed shelter or because they wanted to see a show and see if Jesus was going to do some kind of miracle. So Jesus often taught in parables because he knew that those that were really seeking God's word, God's truth would understand and would be there to, to hear and receive what the Lord would have for him. Uh, for them. So you see, he told these stories. He told the stories so that people would understand and people would, the people that wanted to understand, the people that wanted to serve Jesus would understand. And he did this so that way um, he could gently remind them 
of God's will for their life. Now, in this case of the Good Samaritan, we saw that there was a religious person that walked by and walked on the other side because they didn't want to be bothered. Another person that was of that town and said, oh, that's not my business. I'm going to walk the other way. But then we see another person who wasn't even accepted by the, the community, and yet he stopped. I would hope that if you found somebody that was hurt or somebody was bullying them or hurting them with bad words or bad things that you would stand up and say, you know, don't do that. And that you would help that person. I don't want you to get yourself in any danger. Of course, you know, you want to be careful, but at the same time, too many people turn their head and walk away. Um, and they don't help. And that's pretty sad, especially those of us that are Christians, because God has called us to go out and make disciples, to be his hands and his feet, to be the ones that use our voices to speak his word and to show his love. How are they going to know you're a Christian if you don't show that you're a Christian? How are they going to know that Jesus is alive and that he loves them if you don't love them? So, you know, Jesus did these parables because he wanted people to understand that God is there and God, yes, the greatest commandments. He said, love the Lord, your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, but to also love each other, one another. The cross goes up and down right here and here up and down. That's love Jesus. This way, we love one another. We love each other because that's what God wants us to do. And he, did, he often gave us parables throughout the Bible, different illustrations, if you will, so that way we would be able to understand in a, bear, in a plain manner. Because sometimes the things of God, the spiritual things, sometimes they're so magnificent that it's hard for the common mind, my mind even, to understand exactly what God is wanting us to know. So I encourage you guys, when you read your Bible, sometimes there's words in there that are hard. I have a hard time with reading sometimes. What, help, what I do is I write it down, then I'll look it up. Um, you guys can do the same. If there's a word that's tricky, write it down. Ask your mom, ask your dad, come and ask your Sunday school teacher. Hey, I did. I read this in the Bible, but I don't really understand what it means. And you know, we would love to go over that with you. And you know, always, always pray, pray before you read your Bible, because God will give you eyes to see the, what he wants you to see. He'll give you what they call discernment. Discernment is an understanding so that you will understand the word of God in a clear manner for you, for your eyes, for your heart. And you know what's so great about God's word? God's word is alive. It comes alive when you read it and it's going to be different for you. It's going to be different for me because you know why? Jesus is talking to me through his word, but he's also talking to you too. And sometimes he'll give us parables because the parable is not meant for everyone to understand only those that love him. So I encourage you boys and girls, read your Bible. If you have questions, write them down and come ask me about them. I'd love to share the word with you. And I'm sure your mom and dad would love to do the same. So you guys have a blessed week. I hope to see some of you at church. I look forward to it. And, um, God bless you guys. I hope you guys are practicing your memory verse. You know, we, we, had a, we have a couple that are still doing their verses pretty strong. But anybody is welcome to send in those recordings at any time. We'd love to post you on our video uh, feed as well. So God bless you guys. Have a great week. And let's close in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for this time, Father, that we're able to read your word and to study. Lord, I thank you that you that you show us in different ways all the things that you would like us to know about you. And you give us stories, you give us facts, you give us your word. And I thank you for that, Jesus. I pray for each and every child and every person that plugs in today that you bless their time with us, that you bless them as they, they click off. And Lord, that you give them a good week. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. 
All right, boys and girls, thank you for joining me. Have a good week. Bye. And that was an awesome teaching. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about Jesus than you did yesterday. Now it's on to the puppet show with the amazing adventures of Monica and Ryan. Ryan! Yes? Can you help me clean our room? Uh, no, I'm busy. But it's our room. Uh, I'll go up in a bit, but right now I'm doing something. So, let me finish, okay? Okay, I guess. Man, this room's a mess. Woo! Look at that squeaky clean room. All done by moi. Ryan! I'm coming up. Oh, and Brian is here too. Hi, Monica. Oh, wow, this room is clean. Yeah, I know. Want to comment on that, Ryan? Um, good job. You know what, guys? I got a story to tell you. It's actually pretty quote. It's actually quite interesting. Oh, I love stories. Then good. So it starts off with a brother and a sister and a pumpkin decorating contest. The brother ruins the first pumpkin and they had to start all over again. So the sister being the hard worker she is worked day and night on the new pumpkin. And it just left the brother with, hmm, let me see, one job, one job. All the brother had to do was take it to the table to be judged. But since he was careless, he threw the pumpkin on the table and it fell and broke. How rude. I know, right? We couldn't participate. But... The brother does say sorry to his sister and promises that he'll try to change his ways. But unfortunately, things did not work out because in just a matter of two weeks, he hasn't helped in doing any chores because he's just been playing video games. And the room they share, his sister had to carry the burden and clean it by herself. Monica, why don't you come right out and say what you're trying to say without the whole story? Oh, I don't get it. Just say that I should say it, true to my word and honor it with my actions. I'm sorry. Apology accepted. I was being a little overdramatic. Well, I, I still don't get the story. Well, because those who are meant to hear the story understand it. So that's why you don't understand. It wasn't applied to you. But why did you have to tell it in a story? Because sometimes if you walk people through a story, those who are meant to hear it will understand the meaning. And those who are not, it just wasn't meant for them. And speaking about that, it brings us up to today's devotion, where Jesus uses parables. Oh, well, what's a parable? Well, a parable is basically a story that Jesus uses to explain heavenly things by using earthly examples so the people can understand. Also, the people who are really listening to Jesus will learn, and they will hear the message and understand what it means. They either feel conviction from it, or they understand it because they want to change who they are and be more like Jesus. While the other people who don't really know what's going on and are just hearing to hear and do not want to learn, then they will not understand. Oh, I get it now. That makes sense of why I felt bad when you told the story. It's because I want to change. But since Brian is here, and since he's pretty invested, we should probably do our devotion all together. That sounds like a great idea. And since he knows why Jesus uses parables now, we can just get started. Audio Bible, start reading from the book of Luke, please. Luke 
chapter 10, verses 25 through 37, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So the lawyer answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was the neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And the lawyer said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. And So this parable, Jesus is talking about how we have a responsibility to love our neighbors and help them in times of trouble. Yes, it shows that no matter who the person is, we are called to help others and be that example to others. And it shows that we need to do the right thing even when no one's watching. Because even in the parable that Jesus told, the priest is known for being a teacher of God's word. You would think he would do the right thing, but none of that mattered. His title did not matter because he still did not have the integrity to follow through with the teachings he was teaching when no one was watching. Oh, I get it now. Hey, Ryan, why don't you and Brian come on down and clean up this mess from lunch, please? Okay, Mom. Hmm, that's suspicious. Monica, don't say a word. We did this before the devotional. Now we will start doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. That was a great puppet show. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video, and let's close in prayer together. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us this opportunity to learn more about you, Lord, and more about your son, Jesus, Lord. I pray that you fill us with your Holy Spirit for the rest of the week, and that we have a good rest of the week, too. We praise you, and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, guys. Have a great week.